Hi everybody. So this is a chemo 3 update right before chemo 4 which is in two days. Um, got my blood work back. It was you know normal for what's going on. Um, my anemia is getting a little bit worse but nothing serious. It's just a little below where it should be. But um, overall I'm doing pretty good. Hair's almost gone. Uh, still having tummy problems but at least it's not painful right now. Um, I was working with a GI doctor and you know they did the colonoscopy, it came back normal. Um, I was having this spasms in my colon so he gave me something for that. And then I was hoping he would continue to work with me on the, uh, you know, my G GERD problem, you know, the acid reflux problem caused by possibly a combination of my autoimmune, which I had uh, the symptoms of GERD before I started the chemo. So the, the GERD isn't just a chemo thing. And he knew that, but uh, he, on my last email contact with him, he pretty much said, oh, well, your stomach problems is just your cancer. Just eat less, smaller meals. And that was the last email. And I got pretty upset in a diplomatic way. I, I told him, look, I've never had cancer in my stomach. I've never had cancer near my stomach. My last two uh, CT scans that what they did for other things, not cancer, didn't see any masses in or near my stomach. So to say that my stomach problems were from cancer is an inaccurate statement and it shows that he kind of just didn't want to work with me anymore um but my stomach is definitely having problems i i am i'm i just had lunch and i burst, basically barfed in my mouth when i burped which is disgusting but that just goes to show that my my stomach you know the acid is coming back up so um but the uh, protonics that they have me on seems to be helping because it's not as bad as it was. In fact, my hoarseness is not as bad as it has been. I just now realized that. So, so that's a good sign that, that I'm taking it twice a day. I'm taking the 40 milligrams, which is just it's the maximum dose twice a day. And I've only been doing that for about a month. And hopefully that will, you know, heal everything up so I'm not having so much, uh, you know, it's, it's um, hard to explain. It's just the acid, it gets, it, it, once it gets through, it just burns everything all the way down you know and I think that's contributing to my colon spasming because when I get my treatments the, all, the, all the toxins that are in the treatments kind of compound the acid and really tick off the uh, colon specifically and the stomach and my um, sorry I feel like I need to burp <laughs> and I don't want to you know have something else come up but um, my oncologist said that uh, the dexamethasone, which is part of the pre-treatment to keep uh, the bloat and some uh, inflammation down during the chemo and right after the chemo, um, it can also really irritate the GI tract. So, um, which I I understood that steroids and anti uh, instads can all cause that kind of um, stomach problem. So. But at least my, you know, my oncologist recognized, you know, yeah, it's probably your treatment and we, you know, it's not going to, you know, we're not, oh, it's cancer in your stomach. I mean, come on. That's just, when that doctor did that to me, I'm not mentioning who it is, because I don't do that. But it's just like, whenever a doctor says that to you, it just, it's like, they, they're, it's like copping out, you know? It's like, if you don't want to treat me, just say, hey, just, I think this would be, you'd be better served talking to your oncologist instead of going, oh, it's just cancer. It's like, what proof do you have it's cancer? That's, I just, and I've had that happen to me before, actually twice before when actually they were completely wrong. The first time was I was having uh, tachycardia and it wasn't just a light tachycardia. It was like 160, 180 beats per minute, just sitting down. Oh, you're just stressed, you're a girl, wah, wah. Here's some antidepressants, take this and you'll feel better. Well, you know what? That's what I wanted to say to them. Because that was, I was just, I was like, I know this is not it. I'm a, I'm a happy person. Yeah, we all have stress, but I deal with it pretty well. At least I think so. And, um, and finally, one day I went to the ER after three or four different doctors trying to tell me it was all in my head. And they found that I had an extra uh, heartbeat every five beats. And, oh, yeah, you have an, uh, an extra electrical pathway in your heart. And we need to go in there and actually fry it with, uh, with electricity. And they did that. And... Lo and behold, everything got better. So it's like, 
you know, some of these doctors, I think they're just lazy. They just want to do the, the basic thing, you know, like I think this GI doctor, he just wants to do his colonoscopies and his endoscopies and, you know, that's all he wants to do. I think he's more like a procedure doctor rather than a diagnostic doctor. I don't think he really wants to do anything above and beyond the normal stuff. I mean, he seemed like a really nice guy. and he, At first, it seemed like he really wanted to help. But when I started asking questions about, hey, how can I help myself feel better? He kind of like, eh, I'm kind of not interested in doing this which really kind of sucked for me because I was really hoping he would work with me to help my um, chemo and future uh, infusions, you know, go as smoothly as possible, you know, but he just wasn't interested and that really sucked. But um, the second time was my autoimmune and that particular doctor uh, was like, oh, it's just your cancer. It's just, you know, because, you know, the reason why you feel weak is because of your medications. I'm like, no. I've been on this treatment for three years and now why all of a sudden do my legs feel like they're like 90 year old legs on a 45 year old body? I don't think so. And uh, I was losing weight and my blood work was coming back higher and higher and higher and I was like, hello, isn't somebody concerned about this? And I, and I did my own research and I found out like, hey, can we please do this and this test, two little blood tests. And when they did it, they're like, oh shit. Uh, my muscles were being destroyed by my own body, which was part of my autoimmune disease. So, um, which is under control now. Um, but it's like, if I hadn't said something, I would have been crippled. I would be in a friggin' wheelchair because these people wouldn't listen to me until I had to do my own research, hours of research. So, you know, if something's wrong with you, you have to learn how to do your own research. I, I would, you know, I, I'm thinking about doing a video on how to do research. I think a lot of people don't know really how to search on Google. So maybe one of these days when I actually get around to doing it, I'll do that, but it's really important. So anyway, the stomach thing, um, it's, it's, uh, it's I, I, I consider it under control because it's not causing me pain right now. But I think once I get my next round of chemo, I'm gonna probably go through the spasmic colon again, which I have some medicine for, but it could cause, you know, drowsiness. I'm like, great. So, but um, we'll see. It doesn't seem like it doesn't well I think wheat might irritate me a little bit it's one of those things where I'm not allergic to wheat but I might just be kind of like if I eat too much it kind of irritates it maybe so um, I don't know it seems like anything I eat if I if I dairy you know wheat if I, well if I can't eat wheat and dairy I can eat rice woohoo wow chicken and fish you know oh veggies oh well they might make you poop more I'm like well I'm already pooping enough you know I don't but then I need to eat something other than rice and, and white meat, you know? So I think I may as well just eat what I want to eat, you know, try to eat healthy, deal with the consequences of whatever, you know, GI consequences there are, but at least I'll be getting the vitamins and minerals I need. Um, but it's just, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating because, you know, I like good food. I really like sushi, but when you're doing chemo, that's a big no-no because raw fish could have parasites. And when you're immune compromised, that's a that's dangerous so you know I'm not doing any sushi until after my chemo is done which is another month and a half to two months so um, but yeah so the intestinal stuff it's I call it stable you know I'm mostly having diarrhea you know my normal BM time so it's not that big of a deal and it's and it's not like I can't hold it in until I get to the bathroom it's just like whoop, gotta go potty you know and then I make it to the bathroom and everything's fine. It's just kind of one of those things where long road trips can be a little concerning if you can't find a bathroom in a reasonable amount of time. You know, I know I can hold it for 15, 20 minutes, you know, but uh, after that might be risking, <laughs> risking it, you know, it might be trying to gamble and lose. We don't want to do that. Ooh. So anyway, this is getting to be a really long video, but um, lesson here is just when you eat, just, Try not to eat too much at one time. I think I think for me that's the big key, is small meals, um, but not too frequently because then it kind of still piles up. I, I think my stomach isn't emptying fast enough, and then like it just kind of gets stuck. I, I, it gets feels like it gets stuck, and then all of a sudden everything just starts moving, and it's like oh crap. I mean I can I mean, it's like I'm like oh, so um, I think the smaller meals. And drinking, you know, enough fluids is important, especially if you're having diarrhea. You're going to be dehydrated if you don't. Um, but uh, it's 
the darn medicine. I mean, the Herceptin and Progetta, I know they also cause it, so I'm going to be on that forever. I'm going to be dealing with this pretty much nonstop for whoever knows how long the treatment works for. Um, but anyway, so as I learn more, I will, you know, let you know, but, um, you know, as long as my intestinal problems aren't causing me pain, I'll just kind of go with it. When it starts causing me pain, then I'll start taking medications. Or if it becomes too frequent, I'll take medications. But other than that, I'm going to let my body flush it. I mean, my body is saying it needs to flush itself out. So if it needs to flush itself out, I'm going to let it flush itself out unless it starts causing problems. And that's, I mean, when you puke, your body's trying to eject whatever's in your stomach because it's bad. If you have diarrhea, your body's trying to eject something because it's bad. Why, why plug that up? You know, unless it's causing you to be extremely dehydrated and such. So, um, everybody, our body does things for a reason. Sometimes it's important to listen to it to it to an extent, but not to let it get out of hand. So that there's a balance there, and I've been trying to find that balance. And by the time I figure it out, I'll be done with chemo on on to just the Herceptin and Progetta, and then I'll you know it'll probably not, won't be as bad, but um, we'll see. It'll be interesting to find out. Hopefully, the tummy problems will kind of level out without the chemo, because I think the chemo kind of you know really makes things worse of course you know, duh <laughs> but um hopefully just uh, those two and i'm not sure what um hormone blocker aromatase inhibitor but i'm not sure what they're going to give me hopefully something injection one because that made me everything smell like burnt hair and that was just it was nasty and it hurt um but anyway i will let you know and i also have a scan coming up on july 10th which is mm, like two and a half weeks away so that will be the big thing. I can tell the chemo's working because all the lymph nodes here, I mean, my neck feels almost normal. I don't feel the big blobs that I had. It's hard to feel in this because that's where my, where my little um, tube is for my things. But I mean, I had some really big lymph nodes up in here and I, I don't feel them. And I don't, when I, when I swallow, I don't feel stuff getting stuck in my throat because I mean, the lymph nodes were all the way down here, were all swollen. And they showed activity, which is, you know, metabolic activity from the cancer. Um, so I don't feel that anymore. I have GERD symptoms. You know, I, I, I sometimes food goes down the wrong pipe. That's completely different. That's unrelated to feeling like food's getting stuck in my throat. Um, and I'm pretty sure that was because I had so many lymph nodes, you know, up in here. And I had lymph nodes down in my chest. I had lymph nodes all the way over here. I mean, it was just, I had a lot of lymph nodes. And, um, and I had a lot of my bones. So hopefully, and I don't have the bone pain. So, I mean, that's telling me between no bone pain and the lymph nodes small i'm telling this stuff is working so hopefully it works for a good long time keep my fingers crossed you know you know once the once i'm off the chemo i can kind of hopefully kind of get a little bit healthier because i feel like i'm not as healthy as i should be because of you know i'm not eating well <laughs> lots of junk food bad but i want to make sure i was getting enough calories um anyway so um I'll let you know what happens. Hopefully my next chemo goes good without any bad reactions. I'm gonna be gone uh, for a few days with my uh, a friend of mine at a dog trial. So hopefully I, I don't have a bad reaction and hopefully that goes smoothly because I won't be gone from home. I'll be away from home for three days. So, um, but anyway, um, I'll try to do that video about how to research. And, um, and there's another video I'd like to do is about, uh, about loneliness and how, how I kind of got around because I'm a single person. I live by myself and um, I think it's important to talk about that. Anyway, stay safe and healthy and find your joy in life.